You excited to be here this afternoon? Uh, I, I can feel some somebody here. This, are you excited to be here this afternoon? All right. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 9. I'm going to read a few texts and I will introduce the, the theme for the day. You are not going to leave this place the same. You are going to leave this place with a divine encounter. The amen was weak. I said, you are going to leave this place with a divine encounter. Now, Joseph had a dream. Somebody say a dream. And he told it to his brothers. And they hated him even more. May I present to you that having a dream makes you attract haters. And, and somewhere, somehow, somebody gets to hear about your dream. Not everybody who hears about your dream will love you. Because your dream is bigger than their dream. Shall I say that again? They will hate you because your dream is bigger than their dream. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Verse 6. So he said to them, please hear the dream which I have dreamed. Telling his brothers. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. Notice the word bow down. Now, if you have a Bible, you can highlight. I want you to underline bow down or highlight bow down. And his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even, even more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9. Then he dreamed still another dream. May you dream again. Oh, I, I said, as we are about to enter into a new decade, may the Lord give you a bigger dream. May your dream enlarge. Not only that, may you be able to accomplish what you dream about. I said, look, I have dreamed another dream and this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me, verse 10. So he told his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is it that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed Come to bow down to the earth before you. Underline, bow down again. Now go to my main text for the, for the afternoon, which is Genesis chapter 41, verse 40 through 44. Genesis 41, verse 40 through 44. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt, Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and he clothed him with his garment of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Verse 43. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had and they crowned out before him. Look at the word again. Bow the knee. Somebody say bow the knee. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, they will bow the knee before you. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your, and without your consent, no man shall lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Genesis 42 verse 6, my last text. Bow the knee. He had a dream. The stars bowed the knee. He had a dream. The stars, the moon, the sun bowed the knee. Then here comes him in Egypt. He's in Egypt. And then the command was given. Everybody must bow the knee. Kaya Barosi Ayakataya. Genesis 42 verse 6. Now Joseph was governor over the land. And it was, it was, it was he who sold who sold to all the people of the land 
and Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. On the line again, bow down. Can I prophesy into the life of somebody here today? Can I speak into your life? If God has said that some people will bow, they will bow. I prophesy over your life that cancer shall bow to you. I prophesy that disease shall bow to you. I prophesy that family bloodline curses shall bow to you. I decree and I declare that you will not bow to the economy of this nation. The economy is going to bow to you. I decree and I declare that when you enter into an organization, you will not bow to the organization. The Lord will raise you up. Others are going to bow to you. Poverty shall bow to you. Shall they will bow the knee. Oh, let me feel second service. Shall they will bow the knee. My subject this afternoon, the subtitle of the sermon I preached last week, the promise is they will bow the knee. They will bow the knee. Everybody has a promise over your life. Sometimes the promise of God concerning your life comes through a prophecy. Sometimes the promise of God concerning your life comes through an act. So when I was a child, when I was a, maybe I was, I think I was, I was about four years old or I don't know how, maybe four years old. My father told me that in Africa where I was born at a place called Kotobebi. My father and my late mother tells me I will walk in the community. And as I walk, you know, it's a communal, you know, it's a community, you know. It's not like, you know, the state where you mind your business, somebody's minding their business. It's, it's a typical community where, you know, everybody is, is your mother, everybody is your grandma, everybody is your daddy, you know. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I, my parents tell me that I will, I will go into the community and then I, and when I see people, I literally will just go there and I said, oh Jesus, heal this person for me. And then sometimes the older ones will call me and they will just maybe give me like a dollar or something or a quarter and they will say, pray. So when I get there, because they want to hear me pray. So I will lay hands and I'll say, oh, may you be healed in the name of Jesus. And, and it was so beautiful, so amazing that everybody wanted me to pray. So when I get ahead, hey, he's coming, the young pastor is coming, he should come and pray. So I will go around, pray. Now, little did I know that the act I was doing as a child was a promise that the Lord was making to me that in future, I am going to bring people to you and through you, I'm going to bring emotional healing. I'm going to bring spiritual healing. I'm going to bring psychological healing. I'm going to bring healing in various aspects of their lives. That was how God gave me a promise. I did not understand the promise until I became a pastor. And I cast my mind back and I began to remember those stories my parents used to say. I had flashes of those moments. But you know when you're a kid around that age, it's very deep. But I had flashes of those moment. That was my promise. For Joseph, his promise was that he was going to be great. And, you know, God has a way of speaking in parables. So, Joseph's greatness came to him as people were going to bow to him. Now, if God wants to make you a wealthy person, sometimes God will say, I'll make you a wealthy person. God will say that I will, I will cause you to bless people. He's speaking in parables, but the truth is that how can you bless people when you are not blessed? It means you are blessed. So Joseph was a boy, and the Lord now opens his eyes in a dream to see his future. His future, which is God's promise for his life, showed up in a form of because there were people who were always in the fields, he saw sheaves. 
down, been gathered like hay. Piles. And he had his own. All his brother's sheaves bowed to his sheaf. He was young. He didn't understand what was happening. So when he woke up, he told his brothers that this is the dream I had. And his brothers quickly understood. And they said, are you telling us we, are, we shall be bowing to you? And the Bible says they hated him. Do you, do you know that seven people who don't know what God wants to do with you, instead of them aligning with you, they begin to hate you. So it is okay and it's normal for haters to be around you. And don't fight your haters because your haters, they are not God. Your haters cannot change the mind of God. What God has written about you will surely come to pass. So he, the guy goes back to sleep and anytime God wants to confirm something to you, God makes sure it comes to you more than once. Because by two or three witnesses, a matter is established. So he goes to sleep again in, in another dream. I'm talking about a boy. Maybe late teens. When I say late, I'm talking about mid-teens. Like 17 or 16 years old. And he dreams again. And when he dreams, he, this time he sees the sun and the moon and 11 stars all bowing. You know, altogether there are 12, 12 siblings. He told his father. His father rebuked him. But his father, understanding what it meant, the Bible says, he hid it in his heart. His father had already caught the revelation before the boy even had a dream. His father had made a garment upon, a, 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 a garment, a long garment in the Hebrew called Passam. Seamless garment. You can't tell the end from the beginning. Seamless, woven, very beautiful, and placed on him. And so his brothers automatically hated him. Have you come to a place in your life that wherever you go, you are so loved that people hate you? It's a sign that greatness is upon you. Uh, can, I, can I talk to you? I said it's a sign that Greatness is upon you. So the guy gets this dream and you will think that because the Lord has made a promise, you will think that overnight the promise will come to fruition. But I said it last time. Three, four things you must, you must think about. Three things first. First, God will always make a promise to you, number one. Number two, God will always take you through a process. Number three, before he will present the promise in its reality to you. The promise will be made. You have to go through a process. And then eventually, there will be a presentation to you. There is nobody under the sun that doesn't have a promise from God. How many of you believe that greatness is upon you? How many of you know that you are going somewhere in life? How many of you know that God's eyes are upon you? There is nobody under the sun man, that God has not marked you to achieve something. Everybody has been earmarked for something. Everybody has been, have been marked and prepared and, and chosen for something. But choosing you is not enough. When you are chosen, you go through a time of processing. The problem with us is that we have the promise, but we refuse the process. And once you receive, you refuse the process, there cannot be any presentation. I want to prepare you to come to a place where you understand that nothing happens by accident. Even the things that happen by accident is because the people who have received that thing went through the process without knowing that they were going through the process. Can I say that again? There are some people who study frugality. They study how not to waste money. And that's why they are successful. Some people don't study it. Some people just, by, by whatever reason, they are good managers of money. And if you ask them, why are you successful? And financially so okay. And your credit is good. They can't tell you why. Because they didn't read it in, in any book. They still practice the same principle that makes you stay out of debt, except they didn't read anywhere. They didn't go do any formal training, but they apply the principle. In the same way, 
him, when you, God gives you a promise and you see that you have arrived at the place of the presentation of the promise, you have gone through a process. Maybe sometimes you don't even know that you are going through the process. But I want to now tell you that for every promise, there is a process. For Joseph, people must bow to him. In other words, Joseph will become a king or will become a leader or will become somebody who is of high authority and stature. And in those days, people who are in high offices, when you approach them, you have to bow to them. It's an indication that you are showing reverence. Are you in the house with me? Are you sure you are here with me today? Joseph went through the process of one going into a pit. <laughs> Second process, going into Potiphar's house. Third process, going into prison. Then finally, he was presented the palace. When you are going through process, you are going through preparation for the manifestation of the promise. If you are not prepared, there will be no presentation to you. <laughs> if, if you are not prepared, there will be no presentation. If you have to walk on the day of graduation, it means you have satisfied every requirement that the college wants you to, including your field work, if you have to do field work. You've done all of that. So they have a checklist. Check, 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 check. Then they look at everything and say, well, this one is ready. He goes to whoever it will go to. Whether it's the dean, whoever if you well, prepare. Then they will ask you, you have to come for rehearsal with your cap and gown. They tell you what you have to do. Then you go through every, everything. And then on that day, you receive your degree. Let anybody, let any somebody else wake up on the day of the graduation. May they also appear and say that I'm also coming to work. It will amaze you that it will be about 2,000 of you graduating, but they know everybody's name, and they will not mistake you for anybody. Those who graduated went through process. Listen to me, child of God. For you to rise to the level that God wants you to be, you must submit yourself to process, and God makes you go through certain things for you to be able to get ready for your present. Are you aware that because of Joseph's dream, his brothers wanted to kill him? But because God wants to do something with Joseph, God did not permit his brothers to kill him. So eventually, they sold him. And when they sold him, they took his garment and put blood in his garment. And they, when they brought the garment to their father, and they said to their father, your son is dead. And to them, where Joseph was going, that would be the end of his dream. But what they do not understand is that sending him out of the house, they actually ushered him into his process to arrive at a place where they will bow their knee. I came to prophesy you over your life. When people are treating you bad and people are hurting you, when things are not going your way, don't throw in the towel. Don't give up yet. Don't walk out of the door. Listen to me. What you are going through is part of your process. If Joseph's brothers had not sold him into slavery, he wouldn't have become the man sitting in the second chariot. If your family had not rejected you, you wouldn't have had the boldness to do certain things that you did. If your friends had not walked away from you, maybe have remained where you were. Process. So they, they, they released him. So the boy didn't know where he was going. So he, he was brought into a man's house. The man is called Potiphar. You 
know when there's greatness written all around you, even in bondage, God is with you. So the Bible kept saying, but God was with Joseph. Have you been rejected? I came to tell you, God is with you. Did you fail the examination? God is still with you. Have you been diagnosed of a disease? God is still with you. Your disease does not negate God's plan for your life. first house. He was the servant in the house. A boy. Now maybe let's say he's about 17. Wakes up in the morning. Does the furniture. Make sure that he does laundry. Make sure that he vacuums. He sweeps, takes care of the animals in the house. Sweeps everywhere. Does everything. And this was a boy whose father loved him. His father took extra care of him, gave him a beautiful garment. His garment had been taken away from him. A garment of slavery had been put upon him. So the prince has become a pauper and has become a beggar. And in, in the midst of that, the Bible says, and Joseph was so diligent that Joseph did everything with excellence. And Joseph found favor even in the sight of Potiphar. May I present to you that as you are trying to achieve God's promise for your life, you don't have to manipulate God. You don't have to twist the arms of God. Where God directs you and God takes you, that may not be where you want to be, but God knows why he brought you there. God wants you to learn something over there. So stop crying, wipe your tears, and whatever is presented to you, I want you to grab it and do it with all your heart. So Joseph did everything he needed to do. He did it so well, he became so excellent that the house owner, Potiphar, decided that everything in the house he has placed under him except his wife. But you know how the devil works. When God gives you everything except one thing, the devil shows up and tells you that one thing is too good. That's why God took it away from you. Potiphar's wife is called Zuleika. Say Zuleika. Very romantic name, Zuleika. The, the Bible describes Joseph as a very handsome guy. Cool guy. And then it's just Joseph's in the house. My brother, don't use your handsome names to be messing up the girls. Joseph. Zuleika, Zuleika, the mistress, look at Joseph one day and said, Ooh, what a fine boy this is. Mm -mm. He looks like cheesecake. Mm. Mm. I can imagine Joseph having some full beard coming up. And because Joseph was was cleaning the house and lifting up things. I can imagine his muscles and oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> and I can imagine Joseph, Joseph working and he's sweating and he's wearing a light t-shirt and and he's sweating and his six pack is showing the t-shirt and his muscles are standing like oh, Joseph, 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 Joseph. And Zuleika thought to herself, ah, what a nice meat. Mm -mm. Soft and tender. I need just a little more cheese. <laughs> no, no. She said, I need just a little more Joseph. Yeah. Now you think about this. Think about this. Think about this. Joseph is basically a slave. If you are a slave, you are working without wages. And sometimes your wages will be you will work and work if your master is kind to pay off your debt as a slave. And then your master will ask you to go. By the time your master is asking you to go, all you know is your master's house. 
And here you are in a foreign land. You don't even have a green card. You don't have employment authorization. So even if your master will, where are you going to go? So, Joseph with promise, oh, my, 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 I know there are some people here. The day, the Bible says, and Zuleika was casting long eyes. Long eyes. In other words, she was sitting somewhere and from afar could imagine what this boy can do. Oh. Mm. The ovaries were jumping. Leaping for joy. And Zuleika will be making attempts on Joseph. You know, since Joseph and then Joseph, can I have some? Can I have some water to drink? Joseph brings the water. Please come and sit and do the lake for me. You sit down for me. <laughs> the lake. And I, can I, can I have some water to drink? So, let me give you the water. So I'm going to just rub your hands on my hands like that. Like that. Oh, do it properly. Rub it very well. And all the way down. Thank you, Joseph. And I'm going. <laughs> I was there. The only time that Zuleika will be asking for things is when Mr. Potiphar is not at home. Then Joseph goes. And then Joe. No, not Joseph. Please call the name romantically. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? He said, Joe, can you massage my feet for me? And, 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 and because Joseph is so righteous, Joseph is massaging and Joseph is going, may I not be tempted, oh God. Let God arise. Joseph will do this. <laughs> Father, please arise. Father, please. And then, so Joe, think about this. So Joseph goes to meet the other guys who are slaves, and Joseph says, "Hey man, Ransford, Ransford, something is happening. Ransford, come, 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 Ransford, Ransford, who got problem, man? Who got problem? I got problem. You know my, you know, you know the the, the lady in the house. You know the boss's wife." She looking at me some bad, 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 bad way. Yes, casting long eyes. Stop like that, looking at me, touching me like she wants something from me. I can imagine Joseph's friends. Joe, what's your problem? Be Joseph's friends and try to advise him badly. Tell him. Go for it, man. Do it. Go for it. Tell Joseph how he starts to change after he does that. Dude, man, that's the boss's wife, man. That's high level right there, man. Go for it. Go for it. You can't lose nothing. So you see, they are saying to Joe, go for it. You can't lose nothing. Your, your, your life is going to change overnight. You aren't going to be a servant anymore. You got a boss's wife. They're going to promote you. They're going to release you. You're going to be okay. But you know, when God makes a promise to you, the, the time he makes the promise to you, he wants you to bring, he wants to bring you to a place where you can handle the promise. So he takes you through a process of growth. And the first test Joseph had to go through was the test of greed. Everything was put under him. Was he going to steal because the man was not watching? The second test was the test of his integrity before the man and his faithfulness to God. So when Potiphar's wife did that, with even people saying to Joseph, the quickest way out of this is your slavery, is to just, what are you going to lose? 
just do this thing. This woman will write you a recommendation or will just put his ears in the husband's uh, fingers in the husband's ears and tell this boy must leave and will rent a house for you somewhere. But, you see, Joseph understood that for the promise to happen, he must pass certain tests. First test was that abundance of money was placed before him. He didn't steal. The second test, his master's wife, quick. Look, when God wants to lift you up, Satan will always present you a shortcut. I've seen many a young men, they have the promise of becoming great. They have the promise of doing any kind of good business and succeed. But the devil now presents to them shortcut. The shortcut of credit card fraud. The shortcut of drugs. The shortcut of stolen cars. The shortcut of doing dubious stuff. The shortcut of tax fraud. All kinds of things. And you know how they justify it? God can be wrong. I believe God made a way for me. Because remember when I came to church, my mommy not prophesied. She said, I'm going to be great. And God opened this door. This, this, this got to be God. It got to be God. That ain't God. That's not God. That is you being prepared for the presentation of the promise. How you handle the situation that the devil presents you determines whether you will see the manifestation of the promise. So greed, he passed. Potiphar's wife, he said, let's not do this. One day when the woman was so much on heat, he said, that's for today. You won't do. You will do. He said, I won't do. So you can do. <laughs> I can't do this. I cannot sin against God and my master. I cannot do this. So in the midst of the scaffold, then Joseph, running away, the woman caught a piece of Joseph's garment. Hey. 41st wife is a drama queen. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Mr. Potiphar, <laughs> honey, <laughs> said, what's wrong with you? The boy you brought here wants to rape me. You called Joseph. So Joseph, did you attempt to rape? No, I didn't attempt to rape. <laughs> Let me. So this one, shut up. The woman says, "You, you are you arguing with me in front of my husband also?" So they put him in jail. First test process. Now, the difficulties that you go through does not mean that God will not do what he says he will do. The difficulties are part of the process you have to go through to get to the stature where you can now be able to receive the promise. In the prison. The guy was so good. He was made the prison prefect. <laughs> the guy was so good. The leader in the prison. In the prison. He didn't do anything wrong. And he went to prison. He got there. He became prison prefect because he was this good. That good. Then the king at the time. The king's two workers were put in prison. They were with him, so he was put in charge of taking care of those people. He was taking care of them. Then one day they came and said, we had a dream. The first one, who was the butler, said, I had a dream. In the dream that I had, I saw like a grape, a vine, with three branches. And on the branches, I saw grapefruits and I saw that it has been squeezed and I was presenting it to the king. The same night, 
the king's former butler was also in jail with Joseph. He said, I also had a dream. In the dream, I saw that I was carrying baskets. Three of them with loaves of bread on it. And then I discovered that the best of the air came to eat up. Joseph told them, he said, you the butler, within three days you shall be restored in the king's palace. And Joseph added, when you go to the palace, please remember me. Then Joseph told the baker, he said, baker, the dream you had, seeing the bread being ate by birds, the king, the king is going to hang you. He's going to kill you by hanging. He will cut off your head and the birds will come and eat your flesh. That also came to pass. The guy goes to the palace and forgets about Joseph. Joseph had to pass the test of greed. Pass the test of faithfulness to God. Had to now pass the test of serving people in the midst of rejection. Listen, if God wants to place you to be a successful leader, you must learn how to serve. Part of Joseph's destiny was to serve. So he had to serve. Serve in Potiphar's house. Serve. Serve in the prison. In the midst of that, he was rejected. So he was disappointed. I can imagine the people of Royal House, New Wine Experience Service, that have gone through this. The week of the altar, they won't joke with it. They will bind. They will lose. They will fight every demon. They will do everything. God, please take this cup away. May I present to you that if it's a process, no matter how hard you pray, God will not take it away. It, oh, it will become more intense. But what will help you is that God will give you the grace to be able to endure whatever is happening around you. Whatever is happening is preparation for you to arrive at your place. Oh, you will not be forgotten. The guy goes to the palace. Even though the guy forgot him, the king, God caused the king to have a dream. And the king couldn't find anybody to interpret the dream. So now the guy, the butler has been forced to remember that somebody, oh, I prophesy over your life, that any good you have done, that you have been forgotten, any kindness that you have showed, that you have been forgotten, I prophesy that the Holy Spirit himself will reward you for your pain will reward you for your sacrifice. will reward you for your work. Somebody shout, I receive it. Joseph was brought before the king. And Joseph now interpreted the dream. We read in Genesis 37, 5 through 10, that when Joseph had a dream, in the dream, he saw the stars bowing to him. Because of that, his brothers kicked him out of the house, thinking he was going to die. And that there is no way under the sun that they will bow to their younger brother. When Joseph interpreted the dream, God began to manifest the promise he made to him. His brothers took away the beautiful garment his father gave to him. His father. When Joseph interpreted the dream of the, of, of the king, the king took his garment and gave to the Joseph. Now listen to me. Give me your coat. You're about to close now. You see that you're not wearing a jacket. Let's assume that somebody took your jacket off you. The jacket the person took off you was a $20 jacket. Do you know why God allows them to remove that jacket from you? God allowed them because you cannot be wearing two jackets, two suit jackets. 
you can only wear one suit jacket. And having that one suit jacket means that whatever expensive $20,000 designer suit jacket that the Lord has prepared for you, you cannot wear it. The only way is for you to remove. But left to you alone, you will never remove it because your father gave it to you. And God says that as long as that garment is upon you, you cannot add. You will look like a stupid person. So sometimes God permits our enemies, God permits our haters to become the tools that he uses to manifest his promise concerning your, your life. So the haters will walk away from you. So the haters will push you away. When they push you away, they have actually pushed you to the place of your destiny, to the place of your purpose. So they remove the garment so that you can have the $20,000 garment. They only took a garment away, but they also push you, they also push you to go into slavery, thinking that will be the end of your life. What they did not realize is that it was part of God's equation that you must leave your father's house for you to be able to go and receive the promise, the manifestation of the promise. So where they push you to, actually it was a rejection. It was they being instruments in the hands of the Lord for God to use. May I tell you that even when I became a pastor, I had people who were criticizing me. They criticized the way I preached. They criticized I'm too zealous. Are you aware that the criticisms became an instrument for me to become a better preacher? You see, without them criticizing me, I wouldn't take my time. So because they started criticizing me, anytime I was writing a sermon, I began to think that if I say this, what if somebody asks this question? What if somebody asks this question? I know you can't ask the question in the church, but the Lord now takes me into your head. What if you ask this question? What if, so I will always come well prepared. If I had not seen those people treat me that way, how would I have been able to be a better and a good preacher? It is important that people will treat you bad. It is important that you go through hardship. It is important that you go through difficult moments for you to be able to see the manifestation of the blessings of the Lord. So going through, now you have the garment. And when God now begins to manifest and begin to honor you because of what you have been through, he gives you exceedingly, abundantly, above what you think, above what you ask. So it was not just a garment. There was also a ring. There was also a golden chain that was placed on the neck of Joseph. Now, now the real deal is coming. Then the king said, anytime Joseph was passing, Anytime anybody sees Joseph, with the exception of the king and maybe his wife, anybody who sees Joseph passing, they must bow the knee. They must bow the knee. They must bow the knee. What was the promise? The promise that was made to Joseph is that the brothers will bow the knee. The parents will bow the knee. They did not understand and thought that they, this would never happen. They will kill him. If Joseph had remained in the home of his parents, how, how can this happen? So Joseph had to be sent out for him to become a hero in a foreign country. For a legislation to be made that everybody must bow. Then after that, his father and his brothers came to Egypt. When they came to Egypt, they discovered that his garment has changed. When they came to Egypt, they, without even knowing initially, they all came. Because everybody is bowing, then they all came and bowed me. I can imagine Joseph sitting down. <laughs> Joseph now recalling the dream that he had. And Joseph is now saying, oh, ah, that is why I went through what I went through. For them to bow the knee, I must become a great person in a foreign land. And my father loves me so much that he will not send me away to go and hustle by myself. So my brothers had to send me out thinking they were killing me. But not to where God was using their wickedness to usher me into my greatness. There are two shoes here. They are different sizes. This shoe, how old is Elsam? It's, it's a two-year-old shoe. 
That three-year-old has a promise over his life. And the promise over his life is that he will be great. But the shoe that God has prepared for the three-year-old, what size shoe is this? Eleven. Let's say eleven. This size shoe is eleven. So understand that if God makes a promise to a two-year-old that he's going to step into size, 11 shoe size, you have to understand that if he remains a two-year-old, he can never step into this. So he has to grow to three, four, five, maybe 18, maybe 19, maybe 20 or so to be able to step in into this kind of shoe. So it is with God's promises concerning your life. If you are not ready, the promise will be there. As long as you are thinking two years old, you will be two years forever. It doesn't mean that God is a liar. God is not a liar. But God takes you through process for you to graduate from two to three to four up to the age where you have the maturity and the stature and the size to fit into the size 11. But most of us, there are promises. God has said that people will bow the knee, but we are still thinking like two-year-olds. We are still acting like two-year-olds. God is trying to take us through the process. We are refusing the process. But are you aware that the shoe is always there? For me to be able to get there, I can never bypass the process. I have to go through. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God honor you. And may God cause his face to shine upon you. God bless you, and I love you.